In today's video, I'm gonna give you a full walkthrough of my Champion 184 bass boat. Let's dive into this thing. Now this video is probably very long overdue, but I'm gonna give you guys a full walkthrough of all the modifications that I've made in the final setup of my Champion 184 bass boat. Now, if you guys haven't been around the channel for a long time, I'm actually coming out of a 2014 Phoenix 920 Pro XP, arguably one of the best modern day rough water rides that is made. Now I say that to lead into why I purchased a Champion boat. For me, even though I was downsizing, I knew I still wanted to be able to have the accessibility of fishing the Great Lakes, Lake St. Clair, and these big bodies of water that can get rough really quickly. Champion has probably one of the best hulls for fishing that really, really rough water. So I knew when I was looking for a boat, I wanted to downsize, go to something a little bit older. I knew I wanted to be in a Champion. So I ended up in a 1999 Champion 184. Now this boat, Definitely needed some upgrades. I purchased the boat for $5,000 in July and I've made quite a few upgrades. I've modified the boat and I'm actually pretty sure that this was a champion fish and ski boat. That's something that they were making back in the day where essentially there were two seats on the side, nothing in the center and basically a, a small platform up in the front of the boat. So there were some major modifications that I made to the boat that have allowed it to become what I consider to be my perfect fishing setup. So without further ado, let's actually start looking into the boat itself. Now we're gonna start up here at the front of the boat. One of the first things that I upgraded was the trolling motor. Now what came on it was a Minn Kota power drive. I believe it was a 50 or 55 pound thrust, which wasn't going to do what I needed it to on the Great Lakes. I love to fish at big water, fish all day long and have the power to do exactly what I wanna be doing, which is using the trolling motor consistently throughout the day. So I upgraded to a Garmin Force trolling motor. Now I'm running this on a 24 volt system. You'll see that when we get to the back of the boat, one of the nice things about having the force is that you can either use a 36 volt or a 24 volt system. So it has 80 pounds of thrust, which is plenty to move an 18 and a half foot boat very, very quickly. I believe I can get this boat just about four miles an hour um, if there's not a whole lot of chop on the water. So four miles an hour with the trolling motor is absolutely insane. I actually find myself fishing a lot more quickly now that I have this force than I did with my Altrex on a 20 and a half. Then I put a live scope LVS 34 um, for me, this is a critical piece of technology. I like to live scope fish. I like to use my forward facing sonar, find these suspended smallmouth, especially for smallmouth up here in the Midwest, where these fish roam on these big glacial bodies of water. Having forward facing was really, really critical for me. The other thing is that this has built in 2D down imaging, side imaging in the trolling motor itself, which is really nice. That's a big upgrade from what I had in my other boat. So having that built in has been nice. I'll run that 2D sonar, especially when I'm looking for a fish really close to the bottom. And then I put a Garmin 12 inch Ultra 126 Echo Map on the boat. I had a 12 inch on my last boat. I knew I wanted one unit up front. I didn't want to clutter the front deck with more uh, fish finders. So I went with a 12 inch unit up front. But that really is the front setup. That for me is like the working area. So I knew I wanted to have this set up exactly how I wanted it. Another note is that I put a recessed trolling motor pedal in there. So this to me is really important. When you get most older style bass boats, they didn't have recessed pedals. So I found a company online that's a recessed pedal that has your mount built right into the recessed portion of that pedal. So it's directly below your feet, which is really, really nice. I'll give you a better look at that when we get up in the boat and I show you more of um, the interior of the boat. I did have to make a lot of major upgrades to this. I had to replace some of the flooring, um, obviously to build compartments. So you're gonna see that here in a minute. Uh, I had to add rod buckles. There were quite a few things I had to do to this boat to really make it where I wanted it to be. Uh, so let's kind of go inside the boat now. So for me, one of the biggest upgrades that I made was adding the marine mat flooring. Marine mat, for those of you guys that don't know, is an EVA flooring that sticks down to the flooring that you have in your boat. So you pull up all of the carpet, you essentially use acetone as well as some elbow grease to get all of that carpet and um, adhesive residue off of the floor. And then you measure out the interior of your boat and you send it into them. They'll make you a template, you can send it back and you get your marine mat. This is really, really critical upgrade for me. I personally don't understand or believe that carpeting should be a boat. So going with an EVA deck and flooring was really, really important for the upgrades that I wanted to make. Then I also had to add center compartments. There was no storage in this boat when I bought it. The guy essentially had this entire front deck covered with a single piece of plywood, which didn't make any sense. It eliminated all storage options. 
Um, so I added these three storage compartments with some plywood and put it along where the old storage compartments would have been for that fish and ski boat. There was no center storage initially, so it just made it really, really nice. Here's a closer look inside of those compartments. I mean, that's a pretty big compartment, probably four and a half foot. Then I have marine mat down as the flooring in there as well. Um, can hold a ton of different storage. Obviously, I have my Excite stuff, some Beast Coast, some Machine stuff I've been playing with, but just tons of storage in here, which allows me to fish exactly what I want to fish. And then in this compartment here on the left, I have storage ability to store up to a seven and a half foot rod if I want to. I'm using it right now for just storage of different things that I need to have in the boat um, because I just don't find the need to carry a ton of rods anymore. And then in this compartment here is where I keep all of my life jackets, my throwable, and all the other things that I need to keep in the boat. Now the overall design is a topo map. You guys can't really see it. But then I also have this really cool little ruler built in right there. But as I mentioned before, having this EVA foam decking is so much nicer than carpet. I truly don't believe that carpet deserves to be in boats. I don't understand why it was ever made in boats. And this EVA foam is also padded, which is a really, really nice feature of having EVA foam. I also added these recessed rod buckles. I really like these because you can pull this off, you can lock your rods down, it's super secure, and it recesses into the side of the boat, as opposed to those small elastic bands. I trust this rod buckle quite a bit more, uh, especially when I'm fishing rough water situations. So for me, having a rod buckle, having this installed was really important. I have one on both sides, um, and then I installed, as I mentioned before, this recessed trolling motor pedal. You have your tool holder, you have your mount, which is attached directly to the recessed trolling motor pedal, which saves your back and also gives you a perfect spot to mount your fish finder, which is that 12 inch echo map that I mentioned. But this is my workspace. This is my setup to get all the work done on the front of the boat. One of the biggest adjustments going from that Phoenix to this boat is obviously the amount of space up here, significantly smaller deck space, but I've kind of learned to adjust with that. That's something you're gonna to have to adapt to if you downsize or if you go to an older series or style of boat. Then I have EVA down in the center console or, or bottom of the boat as well, which is becoming more and more standard on bass boats. Right here is just some bait storage. I have a small compartment here to store stuff. And then under the seats, I have the ability to store stuff as well. Now I'm gonna show you guys a quick little hack, but I started storing my fishing line in these cosmetology or makeup style bags. Really, really nice way to store it. In this one here, I have eight, six, and 10, I believe. And then in that one, I have 12, 14, 16, 20. The center compartment here is my cooler, um, as well as accessory storage. And then I have some more storage here where I can keep stuff as well. So really that's the bottom of the boat. And then here is my workstation. So my workstation, is this. This is my setup currently. I have a 12 inch Lowrance Elite Ti, really, really base mapping. And that is the reason for the quad lock. Now this mount here, this is a quad lock mount. You guys have probably seen them all over Instagram and social media. This thing is rock solid. I'll put my phone here and I have my maps linked to that graph up front. So I can run my maps with all my waypoints off of my phone right here. This thing is rock solid. It doesn't go anywhere. This is a vibration mount, so it's meant to vibrate back and forth, but that thing has been a savior. So if you're just limited to one graph and you don't have the ability to get good mapping on that graph, you can run something similar to this or a quad lock mount and really uh, have another option to mount your phone here with your graphs and connect it to a Wi-Fi style unit like that. But this is really my basic setup. Nothing too crazy here. And then moving to the back, really the biggest compromise of going from the Phoenix to this Champion has been storage space in the back. There is goose egg zero storage here in the back, which is gonna take us to our sponsor segment of this video. So as I mentioned, one of the downfalls of this boat is that storage can be really limited. So this video is actually sponsored by Rugged Road Coolers. Now Rugged Road makes a really lightweight cooler. This is a 65 quart cooler 
And what makes it so nice is I can toss it in the boat and use it extra storage for my camera equipment, for my co-angler, or extra cold storage when I'm on and off the water. A couple other awesome features about this cooler is that it has a removable, reversible lid. So you can take this lid off, you can flip it over, and it has cup holders as well as a small space where you can set items or your food or whatever you might need. It also comes with a divider to keep things separated as well as a little tray where you can set your items to keep it off of the bottom of the cooler and separate it from everything else inside. So if you guys are interested in checking out Rugged Rogue Coolers, go down in my description and use the code in the link below to save yourself some money and pick up one of these awesome coolers. So like I mentioned right there, there is zero storage. It's a very limited back deck space. You have your two live walls, one on each side, which actually are pretty decent size. Pretty decent sized live wells, and they're actually connected, so the water goes through both live wells. And then you have your battery compartment. And again, I have a ruler right there up to 21 inches, which is pretty sweet. I had them make it so it was 14 inches to one of the increments, which is the legal limit size of a fish here in Michigan, which is just really, really cool. Um, overall, the marine mat decking on this boat turned out absolutely incredible um, and it's going to be super, super nice when I need to wash it down. So. Also, huge shout out to my buddy Matt Stockton, Stockton Art on Instagram. Most of the stickers that I have on here are from him. You have your smallie side with the No Ignatian Smallie sticker. You have your largemouth side with No Ignatian Regular. But Stockton has just really, really cool artwork that I've used to... Uh, Put on this boat and i never had stickers on my old boat but going into an older style boat i thought it'd be cool to add a little bit of flair and have some fun with this thing now as we move into the back compartment of this boat this to me is really the most important section of the boat short of the hull and the motor having good power this is something i was really nervous about when i went from that phoenix to the champion was that i was only going to be able to fit three batteries in here Okay, so I have these X2 31 series AGM batteries. I have two of them for my Trollo motor, and then I have one which is running everything else. All of my graphs, the live wells, the motor, literally everything else. And I was quite worried, if I'm being really, really honest with you guys, because I could only fit realistically three batteries in this boat short of removing that oil reservoir. The one thing that this gentleman did correctly when he rigged this boat originally was he has very, very good wiring going from the batteries up to each of the units and then the batteries up to the trolling motor. I don't know what size gauge wire this is. It's very, very heavy gauge wire. I was going to replace all of it, but I'm running at about 12.6 to 13 volts all day long on that front graph with the live scope, with the sonar going, with my pumps going. So I've not seen the need to run a fourth battery. I've had some concerns. I guess if needed, I could jump it off the other batteries. I carry jumper cables, but really that was one of my biggest concerns. So if you guys are looking for really, really good AGM batteries, these X2s have been absolutely flawless. For me being up in Michigan, I'm not sure that I yet trust lithium, especially as a starting battery. I have had absolutely zero issues. You have 1100 cold cranking amps on these X2s. Just tons of reliability to trust that it's gonna send power from those AGMs to this motor right here. Now looking at the motor, this is a 175 Merck 2.5L XRI motor. It is an older series motor. I'm pretty certain it is original to the boat. Um, I've not had issues with it yet. My goal is in the next handful of years to upgrade this to some sort of four stroke, maybe Suzuki. Just FYI, Suzuki, if you guys want to work together, I'd love to upgrade my motor to a four-stroke. That would eliminate the need for the oil reservoir as well, so I can put an extra battery in there, but this has been pretty good so far. And then I upgraded to a three-blade three prop, um, and really, that is the back end of the boat, and that is one of the most important parts of the boat, which is why I finished right here.
So there you have it. That is a full walkthrough of my 1999 Champ 184 Bass Boat. Now, like I mentioned, there were a couple reasons that I made this decision. The first one is just where I'm at in my life. I have two little girls. I'm fishing maybe two to three times a month now. So I didn't need to have that really, really nice Phoenix. I know I could maximize the value of that boat by selling it right now and going to something else. The other thing is that this boat fits my fishing style. I knew I wanted something I could get out on the Great Lakes, but I also wanted something less expensive to run down to my local body of water and still be able to get out there. So I can push this boat, I can take it out on the big water if I need to, if I want to, because I don't have to fish in the biggest, baddest stuff possible. To me, this isn't a great tournament rig. There's not enough storage for a co-angler. There's some other limitations in this boat that maybe I wouldn't trust if I was fishing big, big, serious tournaments like the Bassmaster Opens, the Toyota Series, obviously anything bigger than that possibly even your BFLs. There's some limitations with having this style of boat in getting into those bigger name tournaments. But if you're fishing local stuff, I would really encourage you guys to look at some of these older, less expensive boats. I see a bunch of guys going out and buying brand new. They're with a little bit of elbow grease with a little bit of investment. You can go out and purchase an older boat for $5,000, put a few grand in electronics and redoing all the things that you need to redo to make that boat perfect for you and you can have an ultimate fishing rig. Now this is a boat I plan on keeping for a long time. I had that Phoenix for seven or eight years. And so I had that boat for quite a while. This is probably gonna be the same way for me. For me, this is my ultimate fishing boat. This is what I need it to be. This is what I wanted it in a fishing rig for my style of fishing right now in my life. There's a couple things that obviously you're gonna to need to upgrade. You're gonna to need to do over the years. You're gonna to need to do that with any boat but if you're serious about looking for a boat, maybe consider purchasing used or an older boat and really consider your style of fishing and what you need out of that rig. You don't have to go buy a 60, 70, 90, $100,000 boat to go fish your local weekend tournaments. So just consider that when you're looking at your next investment and what you need to be fishing out of for your style of fishing. So that's gonna end this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please go down and give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see me catch some fish out of this rig, click this video right here. If you're not already subscribed, hit that button. It'll subscribe you to the channel and it let you know when I post more videos just like this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care, tight lines. God bless. Pursue passion.